It's turned on, or we're always turned on. With your streets experts, Jake Serwer and Sarah Kuzminski. Here's your director, Andrew Jones, and your floor director, Caitlin Erka. Here's the well-endowed, extremely handsome, and very qualified sex expert, Justin Kushner. And I'm Sammy Stencil, and this is Turned On. Hi, welcome to Turned On, where we're always turned on. I'm Sammy Stencil, and to my right, your left, is Justin Kushner, and special guest, we have Dr. Dan. Um, we just want to say we've had 14 episodes so far, and that's about seven hours talking straight about sex. It may seem like a lot to you, but it's not enough for us. So we have a one-hour episode tonight, so make sure you tune in from 11 to 12 and call in with your questions. That's right, and this is not your ordinary episode of Turned On by any means. Uh, this is a very special episode. My brother, a gynecologist, uh, practicing in White Plains, New York, and within the city. Uh, graduated from UPenn, under, uh, med, uh, did med school at Syracuse, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, and everything's, we're very, very excited to have him here. We are humbled by his presence, okay? We're so hopefully, happy. Hopefully Thank we can you. all learn Thank a lot. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you He's for so joining us. He's so happy to be here. <laughs> and welcome to Ann Arbor. Hopefully he can help us get a little bit sexier. Mm -hmm. This little I know, college town. I know I have questions. We've had a lot of questions that Justin and I can't mm -hmm. answer. So hopefully this episode is yeah. useful. Yeah, absolutely. So educational. Educational, <laughs> useful. And you know, our, our viewers have been there from the very start. They've been calling in. They've been sending us emails. And this is like a public service. We're trying to get back to you, trying to give you all the information uh, that we know. And we have an authority with us tonight. Uh, so let's start with some questions. We got some emails during we this week. We have a ton of emails. That's right. People knew about the doctor we were going to have on board. And so we'll start off with the first question. So we get a first email. Dear Turned On, I have a large pucker <coughs> and it sometimes hurts my girlfriend. What can I do? This is from John from South Quad. <laughs> so Dr. Dan, what would you recommend? What would you All say? All right, John. Congratulations, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so three-legged John. Um, <laughs> I'd say uh, the most important thing is relaxation. Um, a lot of times when a female does see a very, very uh, large penis before intercourse, she tends to become very uh, concerned whether she's going to have pain or not, and the best idea is to try to relax uh, so that she'll enjoy the experience. That's pretty good. That's very good. That's a great Relax. answer. It's not like we're killing anybody. It might <laughs> but I like you're killing anybody. It might make him feel a little well, bit John better. John might have to. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. God knows. Yeah. Here's how big we're talking here. Thanks, um, brother. Oh. Brother, love, right here on Turn On. No, but it's very, okay. very exciting. Well, that's good. All right. Yeah, that's well, I'm great. Relaxation. John has now got his answer. Hopefully okay. he's watching. <laughs> you know, keep it simple. I think right. we have another question too. Yeah, oh, we can. We got tons, so we had to pick one almost from each house. We got a lot of emails, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. ton of emails. Good amount. Uh, let's go on to the next one. Dear turned on, my girlfriend says that my semen tastes <laughs> awful. Okay, emphasizing the word awful. What can I do to make it delicious? So, well, I'm not sure about delicious, but what can you do to make it at least appetizing? Um, well, there's a couple of things you can do uh, to change the flavor of your semen. Uh, seminal taste is based upon uh, acidity and what you've been eating. So what you'd want to do is to remove some things out of your diet. Uh, alcohol, unfortunately. Uh, asparagus, broccoli, and spicy foods. Uh, chipotle, all those kinds of spices, does make semen have a very noxious taste. And if you want your ta semen taste sweeter, the truth is to eat uh, sweet fruits and vegetables. Um, pears, apples, pineapple, that sort of thing before you, uh, before you have any sort of relation in which you might uh, ingest semen. Really good. You know, that's going to send <laughs> Big Ten Burrito out of business. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay, because as long as it tastes better, right? Taj Mahal Palace is yeah. <laughs> not, good. not where not you want to go good. before. Not uh, a good first date. I <laughs> wonder how many men are actually willing to cut alcohol out of their diets that's for right. their girlfriends. It's not so much the alcohol. It's more the spicy food. More the spicy food. Kind of, that kind of makes sense, because I read somewhere a while ago, vegetarians have better tasting semen. This is what I read. So Well, yeah. that's excellent. There may be some credit to that statement. Okay. That's, anyway, that's great. Let's move on, because this is, this is really Okay, we out. have a lot more emails, so... Yeah. Let's get to it. Our third email is from a girl, okay, from a Leslie. Female. 
I had a friend who was taking birth control pills and got pregnant. What are the chances that this will happen to me? So Leslie from West Quad, she wants to know the chances of getting pregnant on birth control. Leslie, um, you will definitely get pregnant if you have sex and you don't take your birth control pills correctly. Uh, you have to take them exactly the way the doctor told you. Um, if you do miss a pill, it means you're not covered for that entire pack of pills. So you hear a lot of uh, unfortunate episodes of females getting pregnant when they're on birth control pills, uh, but truly they're messing up the pills. So your chance of getting pregnant if you take your pills correctly is virtually zero. But you have to take them correctly. That's right. That's yeah. great. And you, can't, you can't lie to yourself. If you miss a pill, uh, you're not safe for that cycle. While we're on this topic, yeah, I have one question about, too. Go ahead. Okay, well, yeah. they might be the same one. Yeah, possibly. So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll like, you okay. guys. <laughs> Great. Great sex minds think alike. That is. Well, we'll see. What about Plan B? Is that your question? No. Oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what's the deal with Plan B? I've known a couple of. Uh, never mind. Well, let's say um, you're sharing this with I've heard a yeah. couple of stories. And I also heard it's 120 hours after the sex incident, and the doctors tell you 72 hours. Yeah. Can you um, clarify that, please? Well, there's a lot of ongoing research in Plan B right now. The truth is, is that you only have your 75% efficacy, which means three out of four chance that it's going to work after 72 hours. I do give it up to, to my patients five days after, um, but the likelihood that it's going to stop a pregnancy is low. But p some doctors give it as a, as a last-ditch effort. Uh, but if you do mess up, and you know when you mess up, uh, if you do mess up, get the plan B as soon as possible. I don't know what it's here in Michigan, but in New York, uh, you can buy it over the counter. Yeah, CVS, yeah. $40. Yeah. Not, I mean, not every, <laughs> but I'm a yeah. CVS. I need to know. I need to know. Talk to John. Talk to John. He's John. great. John. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Yeah, you right. know, I... I'm a sex where I need to know these things. That's so cool. that's exactly. So <laughs> knowledge, knowledge is power here at Turned On. Well, yes, my absolutely. question, okay, my question was, I also heard that other kinds of medication can offset a kind of birth control. Is that true? Can um, interrupt the cycle? Of it, yes. If you are on a medication, you have to talk to your, your physician, of course, about that medication, birth control pills. Um, a lot of people have said that antibiotics coincidentally taken with birth control pills can offset birth control pills. Um, it's pretty rare for this to happen, uh, but if you are on another medication, you haven't had a chance to talk to your doctor so the doctor can look up in the book uh, which pills will be affected, uh, you have to use an alternate uh, form of birth control. But these condoms. Yeah. Well, yeah. Very good. When, you're, when you're not sure, you can't depend on the birth control pills. Well, very good. Well, how about we move on to the next question? We've got tons. we got to hopefully touch upon everyone else. I so. know. Everyone wants to talk to Dr. Dan. Next emailed in question. Let's see. Okay. Dear Turned On, uh, very blunt to the point, how can I orgasm during anal sex? Kathy from East Squad. Kathy wants to know. What a trooper Kathy I is. like it. I like where her mind is. female. Yeah. Yeah, well, she's awesome. Well, uh, I applaud you, Kathy, for your ex uh, newfound endeavors. Um, to... to so orgasm during anal sex is uh, a little bit of a, a difficult thing. Um, the most important thing is relaxation. Again, um, it's very, very rare for someone to actually engage in anal sex and have an outright orgasm. Um, there has to be some form of clitoral stimulation as well. So you can, yeah. That's right, ladies. Exactly. Tomato, tomato. Is it? It's clitoris. Clitoral. We have this debate every. Depends week. on what side of the pond you're on. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, so. right I'm happy with that. All right. You say clitoral. I yeah. say clitoral. Clit oh, okay. <laughs> clitoris. All right. Let's. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the, you have to have some sort of clitoral stimulation. It's very, very rare that from straight anal intercourse an orgasm will arise. There it is. Yeah. Excelente. But when it does. It's a, it's a, it's a powerful thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Whatever. Kathy has that to look forward to, hopefully. Yes, Kathy. So, okay. Good luck. I have a question for Dr. Dan. Yes. What about male anal stimulation while giving oral sex? How, and that makes the double orgasm. Can you like ex talk about that? We've had some <gasps> who's, questions about who's that. on who? A male on a male or a male? I mean, if a female on a male or a male on a male. Oral well, sex and you know. Well, basically, the reason why anal sex and orgasm is so powerful is because 
uh, without getting it into it too greatly, there are muscles that spasm. And these muscles are found in both the woman and the man. In the man, it, the, the muscles spasm and then it sends the ejaculate flying through the air. Um, the female has the same experience. The thing is, is that the rectal muscles also will spasm. So if there's an item around or in the rectum during intercourse, uh, it makes for a very, very powerful sensation. So that's why a lot of uh, females use uh, toys in the, in the anus or in the rectum and then withdraw them at the time of intercourse. It, it creates this explosive orgasm. So anything with the mouth or anything with a toy or anything with a finger, a hand, or a penis, or whatever it may be, it really does create a powerful experience for the lucky one who's on the receiving end. Awesome. The catcher, if you will. The catcher. Anyway. It's uh, good to be the catcher. <laughs> so let's move on. Let's move on. I mean, this next one. question is a great question, I think. I'm excited. Let's see. Okay, this next question. From Maggie. I would, I would, let's see, I wouldn't have, say, been around the block a few times. I'm getting complaints. Is there anything I can do to make myself tighter? Dr. Dan? I know uh, I've tried to answer this question a couple times, but... Okay, well, first we'll be getting Maggie's phone number. <laughs> very, very so, nice. Um, <laughs> right, I'm still here till tomorrow, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> the second thing, yes, there are something, uh, there is something you can do to try to make yourself tighter. Uh, it's called Kegel exercises. You might have heard this before. Uh, Kegel exercises are these exercises that females can do. If you're not really sure what a Kegel exercise is, it's very, very similar to uh, when you go into the bathroom in your midstream to just squeeze and stop the urine flow. And this can be done when you're driving or sitting in class. If you have a boring class, you can practice your Kegels. Uh, and it does create uh, sometimes a tighter feel. And then during intercourse, you squeeze those muscles. Uh, it's a little bit of a different sensation during sex, but um, nonetheless, it does make someone who has a sensation of not feeling so tight to feeling tighter. So Kegel go. exercise work. The doctor says yes. Yes. Yay! Kegel exercise. Kegel exercise. We love Kegel. That was on a very special Sex with Sammy one week. Yes. And so, ladies out there, get to you doing your Kegel. We love you the Kegel. You can also get surgery, but I, the surgery is not recommended for someone who hasn't finished having kids. Great. It's cool. I have a question yeah. about this. I read about um, a lotion that you can put on, and for 24 hours it actually tightens the muscles, and it's called like a virgin. What, have you heard it anything about like this? sounds like crap. Okay. <laughs> so, so when, we, when we talked about this, I think it was a Valentine's Day gift. I hope you didn't buy it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We bring up a lot of things. I guess if you put enough layers inside, you know, maybe. the hole smaller than, uh, yeah, but other okay. than that. So two thumbs down for the uh, Like a Virgin. Okay, oh, like man, it sounded too good to be true, I think. All right. Well, All right. we got to give everyone fair play here, so we're going to move on to our next... Yes. Uh, email. Let's see which one. Which one is this? Ah, dear turn on. Is it true that females can squirt? I see it in pornos all the time. Jake, I'm with you. I see it in pornos all the time as well. Jake from Mary Markley. Jake, it is true that women can squirt when you put an entire bag of fluid inside the vagina. Uh, there is really no such thing as this female ejaculation or female squirting um, in which you know, females can send fluid flying through the air. Um, there's a lot of websites and a lot of uh, pop culture that says it's true. Uh, it's just not. They don't have the glands, the muscles, or the place to put it. Now, a lot of times people will say that um, you know, the whole bed is wet after sex, and that's possible. Maybe a woman gets very, very wet and excited, but um, it, is, uh, it is not a uh, squirt. All right. Well, we are not only answering everybody's calls and messages, but uh, debunking popular myths as well. Yes. It's yeah. like Mythbusters with Dr. It's Dan. It's very disappointing. I, I learned that when I first got into medical school, and I was just like, oh, it can't be true. <laughs> I saw it on the videos. It was wonderful, but uh, it's Extensive not. research. It's, it's extensive it's research. Not, it's not. It's not possible. We can hear that. What is the degree in wetness that women can have when they... On the scale I, so I know I heard stories of like big yep. puddles to Absolutely. people having trouble getting wet you and lubricated. So you, I mean, you can wet the whole bed. It can go through multiple layers. It, it all depends on what you're producing. You know, you have four glands in the vagina that produce lubrication, and if they're going full force, you wet the whole bed. But you're not going to squirt. That's what I'm saying. You're, you're right. It's not an right. it's not an ejaculation, but. 
I mean, you could soak through the mattress if you're really having a good time. Well, that's fabulous. Yes. <laughs> that is just great news. Oh, the twinkle in her eyes. Boy, yes. but what do you say? I thought that was mascara. I'm not the only no? one. <laughs> I thought that was a joke. Okay. <laughs> Let's, that's enough about squirting. Let's move <laughs> on. <laughs> I've had enough of the squirting. Okay. Here we go. Do you ever turn down? Oh, I get this question all the Can time. Can I give my boyfriend <laughs> yeast infections from Sarah from East Quad? No. You can't give your boyfriend a yeast infection. That yeast infection is yours. Um, however, if you're having a lot of sex when you have a yeast infection, uh, he could get irritated and could get a rash, but it's not a sexually transmitted disease. Wow, that's good for us, man. Yeah. Pound. Yeah. All right, let's continue. <laughs> I heard left. <laughs> Okay, this next question comes close to my heart, so yes. why don't you take it away? I will. Here we go, and I'm excited to see what does <laughs> take it. Uh, dear Turned On, close to your heart. sometimes when I laugh, to my sneeze, okay, uh, I lose my bladder control. <laughs> why? Kate from Cousins, Kate from Cousins laugh or sneeze, I suppose, loses her bladder control? So when you laugh, sneeze, cough, See a cute guy on the walk, you lose your bladder control. <laughs> Dribbles a little bit. Um, I, Kate, I would not be too upset by this. This is a common experience uh, of all females, uh, particularly women who have had kids. Me, I don't know if you've had a kid or not, but um, I, you know the the female urethra is very very short, and it's very common that when you have a sneeze or a laugh, you create a valsalva, which is a kind of you know pressure down on your chest and sometimes uh, urine can leak out. The one thing I would recommend if this is happening is to go see a doctor and have uh, a urinary test just to make sure you don't have an infection uh, because sometimes you can get uh, leaking from an infection. Oh. Yes. So some people should go to the doctor and make okay. sure that they don't have an infection. <laughs> right. And after any one of these we should go back and see our doctors and physicians and all that. Right, Sammy, we should go see our Well, doctor. I'm glad that you're... Got <laughs> okay. that, Sammy? <laughs> yeah, we're going to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make a trip out to New York soon. Is that... <laughs> okay, let's move... Let's please move on. Okay, well, this is a very exciting segment that we have, okay? Um, again, we depend on your emails and your calls. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, this is a top ten list. We, and this we've done right. top list before. A lot of lists. Okay, and this is very... That's not copyrighted, right? No, this is right oh, okay. up your alley, Dr. Dan. Okay. Top 10 sexual scares. And Oof. this is, we are all familiar. Yeah. Uh, sex can be very scary. Of these. Um, <laughs> sex can be very scary at some points, and so... Downright frightening. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're not Usually putting the hands fun, of a professional. Right, exactly. Yes, yes, when you don't have a professional in the fix. Okay, so what's the, what's the number 10... Uh, uh, we'll start. Can we, can we start with the number. Well, we'll just see what. Aside from my sabotage, with. let's let's. Okay, <laughs> we'll do start number one, I guess, right? Of the so number one. Top ten. Oh, this is how we got past the copyright. The number one. That's right. I got you. Number one. Anyways. Sexual scare. Top ten sexual scares. Number one is I miss my period. Aunt flows late. What do I do? Oof. Oh my gosh! Am I pregnant? Terrible, prayers? terrible moments. <laughs> That's a very, there's very... Nothing more, there's, there's nothing more scary than... Yep, there's, there's two parties in scare right there, and uh, one week after your periods, do take a pregnancy test. If it's negative, it's probably going to stay negative. If it's positive, next step. Next step. Oh, boy. Yeah. Plan B is already too late. Well, Plan B is already too late. So... Miss the boat. You're, yeah, you're, you're there. You're there. Baby on board. And you know what? If you have sex and often... You're, you're, you're likely to encounter any of these on this list, and so yep. take it from our sex experts. And, uh, you want to draw a diagram? Terrible, to terrible. Draw? No, 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 not diagram. Oh. Anyway, we'll move on because we don't want to Debbie down uh, no. anybody out there. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, our number two on this list is uh, L. Bumper Stein, I guess. <laughs> L. Bumper Stein or Stein? Uh, probably Stein. Um, but anyway, basically. <laughs> A bump on your penis. Bump or rash, I would suppose, uh, is in this uh, category. Yeah, that you find a bump. Oh, right. that's that's frightening. And what is your that immediate is reaction? Scare. Well, besides, oh my, Jesus. Besides okay. the throw up on my shoes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would say, you know, there's a lot of things that can uh, cause a bump on the penis or the vagina. It's not all horror show. 
Uh, it could just be an ingrown hair or something like that. But if it's uh, weeping fluid, I would definitely <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely go to see my doctor so the doctor could do a culture and make sure it's not something like herpes. Herpes. Herpes, herpes. wins. I know we've had herpes. a couple. Show me herpes. <laughs> oh my oh god. god! We had a couple oh, calls this is about. Exciting. Why don't you just I'm interrupt sorry. and Can we just go time ahead. out? We do have a call. We've had technical difficulties in the past, and so this is fantastic news. Alex from East Quad, you're on with us. I spoke too soon. I probably spoke too soon. See what happens when you interrupt? Oh, Alex? Alex from East Quad. Do we have Alex? Oh. We lost we, Alex. We feel his pain. Call we're back. We'll, we're working on it. Yeah, try again, please. But I was going to say, we had some questions, Dr. Dan, about they found a bump or mysterious bumps, and they were just going to see if they went away. That's what their plan was. So you're Who's saying... Who's A caller. We had a caller oh, okay, about this. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not everything relates to my life. <laughs> 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 we did have a caller about this, so... Yeah. Um, let's if see the, exactly. if the Most bumps will go away. The only ones that won't go away are warts. They'll stay. Uh, but a red bump, of all the things a red bump could be, a lot of them will go away. If they don't go away, you know you got trouble. And if they what do, if, if they, they do, do go, go away, away, well, you don't know if you had trouble or not. It could so be you should go see a doctor no matter what. Well, what well, yeah. The only the only kind of bump that I wouldn't, I would say it's not a problem. Is I know this is gross, but if it's if you could pop it, like if it's a pimple, then it's a pimple. It's an ingrown hair, and that's it. Okay. But if you can't pop it, that's uh. Fabulous. That's scary. Fabulous. All right. Well, Justin? I'd like to give it a second shot. Do you mind? I don't mind. Alex, again, I don't forget your dorm exactly, but Alex, East Quad, East Quad you're on with us. Hi. Um, mm -hmm. Alex, uh, First time, uh, shame on you. Second time, shame on us, huh? Seriously. You know, fourth week, shame on us, I guess. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. This is just great. You know, we almost feel like this is sabotaged by the other sh sh shows on this network yes. when we talked about this because people are jealous. <laughs> Of uh, our popularity. Yes. We're so popular. And so we're pretty sure people are pulling wires back there. But anyway, I think we have number three on the top ten. Let's get to it. Scares Mine, number list. three. Let's see. Number three, top ten sexual scares. Mick Cheaterson, which is my boyfriend's been cheating and I just found out. Not only am I emotionally upset, <laughs> but, but you may be physically. I'm a woman, as well. so you can emotionally well, you upset, get the award. eat more. <laughs> has, am I going to get an STD? What a jerk. Right. Um, so he's been cheating on you, and you just found out, and he's been cheating with you don't know who, right? Exactly. And you guys have been very, sexually active. That's a very scary thing. Well, you know what you got to do. You got to go to the doctor. You have to confront him, and then you have to go to the doctor, and I would do a full STD panel. Chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, uh, hepatitis, and HIV. There you go. It's a big deal. I've met a lot of patients in my practice who came to me with this problem, and unfortunately, they have been infected. Is there any um, requirement for you to tell your partner if you come back with an STD? I don't know in Michigan. Um, in New York, uh, you contact the Board of Health, and the Board of Health starts contacting uh, the patient, and sometimes we'll contact the, put the onus on the patient and, and push them into telling the other people. I, I honestly don't know the law. Okay. I don't, definitely not in Michigan, I don't know. Well. But you should. I know oh, one be a law. Dirty, rotten I thing. do know one law. What's the law? If you have HIV and you're a prostitute, you have to tell. <laughs> you have to tell. <laughs> I just have an AIDS class. Oh my God. Oh, okay. Well, we have Alex's question. We can't hear him, but we have his question. How deep is the vagina, Dr. Dan? Alex, that is a very, very good question. Um, the vagina is actually pretty interesting. A pretty interesting organ. Um, <laughs> If you, if you just did like an anatomy lesson on uh, a corpse or something like that, the vagina would be very, very short. It would be about this big. Uh, but if you notice that the skin, uh, if you ever become, you know, engaged in an encounter and you have a willing partner, you'll see the skin has what's called rugae, and it's, it looks like an accordion. So even though the penis is only this big, it can be stretched all the way to about this far. So... <laughs> yeah. Found length. That's how that's you could. Very so that's that's why it's it's like an accordion. It'll expand to fit a lot of things: large penis, baby, a Mountain Dew bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you. Especially if you wake yeah. up and you got to pee the other night. That is a good question, though, Alex. <laughs> there we go. Whatever floats your boat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hope so it's so. not just a black hole. No, it's, it's not, not a, black a scary hole. black hole. No. Okay. 
contrary to popular belief. Uh, what about? Could be more not to me. pleasing. It pays the bills. Pays the bills. <laughs> <laughs> How many vaginas do you see a day, Dr. Dan? Uh, How many? Between 30 and 50. That's amazing. Oh my yeah. God. But they're not vaginas. They're that's how many vaginas <laughs> Justin sees a day, too. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I don't get paid for it. Yeah, but that's all online. <laughs> and it costs <laughs> 9 99 a month. So. <laughs> it's all online. Youporn.com, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Right, right. Uh, no, it's been, it's gotten me through many a night, uh, that Youporn. <laughs> anyway, no, let's move on and let's get off of me and my ways, uh, please. Achy, breaky rubber is our number four on this list. Okay, basically. Achy, breaky rubber. Remember, this is uh, sexual scares, condom breaks. Oh man, this is up there kind of with. This is a very high. This is this high, number one on my list of scares. Well, actually, Sammy, you can tell us what to do. You can tell us where to go right after the condom breaks. See Dr. Dan. No. 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 <laughs> 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 go to CVS. <laughs> go to CVS. <laughs> CVS, <laughs> see Yankee yeah. for the plan B, $40. Yes. What aisle, what aisle was it? It was aisle nine? <laughs> aisle nine. Save I don't mind CVS. Right. You know what? This is not me. <laughs> 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 she's got a CVS card, so she just wipes it. Half yeah, off. right. Anyway. Uh, Keeps their store open. It's friendly. Love it. I don't know. <laughs> right. This is a comedy. Remember that. Let's go to number five. Let's just go on right to number five. Let's do that. I don't really... Okay, I'll say this. Number five. It's not achy breaky rubber, but... Just keep going. Okay, achy breaky five. I mean, <laughs> 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 number five, nice top ten sexual scares is dairy in the hairy. Okay, <laughs> now. I have it. <laughs> this uh, fear is. I'm going to have to take I don't a break. Know who, I don't know who came up with this. Dairy in the hairy. I don't know who wrote this, but yeah. cottage cheese like substance coming out of my vagina. Yes. What? This uh, is you scary. Have, yeah. This is, is very this funny. an STD? Am well, I weird? This is more of a scare for the male, actually. You know, he goes and, you know, begins to uh, involve himself in an oral experience, and he finds cottage cheese in his teeth. Uh, this is quite a, you know, scary thing to happen, and uh, I think the best thing you could do is be honest uh, and tell your partner and let her know, because it's just a common yeast infection that re really bad and is unnoticed. So if you're having that kind of encounter, uh, best thing would be... <laughs> not just tell your partner and let her know so she can go uh, take care of business. How do you confront your uh, girl? I mean, I would say to play stupid. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, what is this? What yeah, is this? Right. Like right. Exactly. Substance. What is this? I think you spilled some of the. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That sort of thing. Innocent. Right. Poor, poor innocent bear cub. I'm not sure what it is, <laughs> but it's taking over. Yeah, it's it's not it's quite scary for the male, That's and I, I do have patients come tell me that this has happened to them, and it's just natural. Okay, well, well, it's all natural. It's, it's not nothing good. to be that scared of. Right, right very good. Amazing. So what do we got? We, we got have the number six. Okay, this one too. Uh, this one's pretty bad. And we're gonna try Alex from Bursley. Bursley, you're on with us. Eric, Eric from Bursley. Eric from Bursley. You know what? This is just great. This is silly, silly. <laughs> well, you know what? We don't need callers. Uh, we don't need. We got Dr. No, Dan. We do, no but okay. We have this question <laughs> coming though. All right, very good. Even though we can't hear him, which is very unfortunate. I'm looking forward to it. Here we go. How do you get semen oh. out of the couch? Out of the this couch. is the second question we've had about this. How do you get semen And I think we couch? said flip the futon mattress over. That's right. Well, let's see what Dr. Well, Dan has to you say. You guys could take this. I mean, I'm not a mom. I'm a gynecologist. So I don't really know how to get I'm semen okay. out of the couch. Well, okay, uh, from, from our own experiences, you hire a carpet cleaner and they work on the couch. Okay. There you go. So yeah. flipping the cushion flip the only cushion. works once, though. Yeah. You know, so. Well, you know, if it was my semen and my couch, I wouldn't really have How much of an issue. I've seen your semen. couch, and we know. That. Right. Okay. Exactly. Uh, well, well, if I mean, it's not I mean, my semen, gasoline and matches. Is let's how I let's think up. about this. I mean, if you got, I think it's right. If you got if, if you got chicken soup in a couch, because semen is made up of a lot of things that chicken soup honestly is made of. What would you use to get chicken soup out of a couch? I guess that would be the same thing. Like a stain remover, yeah. I guess? Yeah, I mean, it's just protein and sugar. Okay. That's all it is. And sperm. Yes. <laughs> I'm there little, it is. I'm little, <laughs> Our little troopers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very good. I'm glad we got that question. And thank you for relaying that yeah, for us. Our camera woman's working very hard behind the scenes. She's just amazing. So we really do appreciate it. 
Um, and everyone here is trying to get these calls to work, so keep calling in. Keep calling, please. Right? And uh, we do appreciate the effort. Okay. Okay, so we have our number seven. Or sexual Did we touch discharge? I don't think no, we No, we didn't. We have not touched upon the discharge. Discharging. Uh, <laughs> lack of creativity there, but uh, discharge from Discharge and Marvin. Discharge and Marvin? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> discharge from the penis after a sexual encounter. What is it likely to be, Dr. Dan? The clap. The clap? Yeah. Clap on. A horrific experience for any male. Uh, you have chlamydia. So uh, congratulations, you win. And uh, <laughs> you should definitely go uh, to the doctor to get your shot and take your antibiotics. Oh, man. But if and you I are having... Oh, jeez. If you are... <laughs> What's wrong, Justin? It's not a good <laughs> experience, right? Isn't there a Q-tip involved at some point during this there process? There is a very small Q-tip that is involved in this process. Oh, my goodness. That goes into the urethra. Uh, some people think it's a little bit uncomfortable, but it basically involves a shot. You take like antibiotics. Oh, man. I don't think there's anyone who would <laughs> like a Q-tip in their penis head. <laughs> 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 I just can't. I mean... Yeah. Uh, unless oh, you have okay. daggers in your back as well, <laughs> Dude, that sounds like a pretty masochistic experience. <laughs> <laughs> so if you like that, uh, yeah, that would be great. But otherwise, you have to go to your doctor, of course, and get your antibiotics. Right. And all these, all of these. And then you check up to make sure you cleared the infection. Yeah. And these are all. I mean, often, almost every one of these scares are followed up by a visit to the doctor or the physician. So please uh, do us a favor. And UHS is open at 8 a.m. right down the oh. street. Okay, so I guess... Eric from Bursley. Uh, we have a graphic on with us. Oh, look at this. Oh, <gasps> nice. Okay. I got my girlfriend a build a willy. How can I improve myself to compare? So basically, it's Eric versus himself. So Dr. Dan, just to fill you in, uh, it's, it's clone a willy. Uh, dot com. Clone a willy, actually, dot com. And what you do is you create a cast member of yourself. It's a hardened vibrator of yourself. It's identical. Copy of your own penis. Erect penis. Right. So you, people, girls, pleasure themselves with their boyfriends or their significant. We had this debate. Can oh, you okay. lose your girlfriend to your own, your own self? Clone a willy. Right. And we had tons of questions. Um, I would say, you know, right now, I mean, surgically, there's not really much you can do, but they do have, and yeah, it's fairly late right this moment, what it is, they have... Uh, these rings that you could put underneath the balls to engorge the, excuse me, testicles, that you could put underneath the testicles at the show. We see balls on this show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, they're not exactly the most perfect correct show on campus, <laughs> uh, but that's what we um, watch. So basically what you could do is you could, uh, they buy these, uh, uh, I'm sorry, what's, what's the name? Blank rings? Christine? The, um, I, I can't cock remember, rings. but uh, no, it's not a cock ring. It's, okay. it's something that goes basically at the shaft of the penis and surrounds the penis makes it very, very tight. Uh, that and then you use a vacuum, a penis pump. And if you use a penis pump with one of these engorgement rings, uh, you'll basically make yourself the best that you can make yourself. What about a Swedish penis enlarger? Is That's penis pump, yeah. Penis, penis pump? pump? Okay. Yeah. Very nice. And yeah, what it is, and basically, work. <coughs> it, they do work. They work pretty well, actually. And what they do is, uh, I'll keep this short, but it, it, the, the penis is uh, like a spongy tissue and it fills with blood. And what the penis pump is, it's a vacuum. So it brings all the blood as much as possible into the penis until the penis can't hold anymore. So you'll actually find yourself have a lot more girth and a lot more length than you'll ever had before with wow. these penis pumps. So it does it does work. <laughs> that's actually that's but, news to me. But it's not comfortable. Right, okay. Oh, okay. But with the penis enlarger pump, go Swedish or go home. Yes? Yeah, it works. Yes. Okay, uh, we're gonna give this one more shot. Huh? No, no, it's an email. It's that's another an email, email oh, type thing. My apologies. So so Christine from Bursley called in. And our phones aren't working, oh, but she wants to know. Oh, this is how we're relaying. Very nice. Okay. My okay. boyfriend is a cross dresser. What should I do? Mm -hmm. Oh boy, and he's you know, probably stretching out all your own clothes. That's interesting. Um, if, it's, if he's wearing your clothes, that's one thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Do you have time and marketing? I mean, I'd like to see what Dr. Dan has to say. I, f I, thinking from just a medical standpoint, and you know, I really don't want to offend anyone, but a lot, and like I said, I really don't want to upset anyone. But the truth is. Many cross-dressing males uh, are involved in homosexual practices. So I would really make sure that that male is engaging in safe sex. That's the deeper issue here. So here are you implying he's probably cheating? Uh, I never said that. Uh, but whether you're gay or straight, there's fidelity and infidelity. It's just that if you have a cross-dressing boyfriend, uh, I would just make sure that this boyfriend is... Uh, not cheating on you and not engaging in, so <coughs> getting himself in 
other sexual experiences. I'm more concerned if he returns my underwear and bra back. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You know, that's just did, you. Either that's way, just that's right. just me. Right. Stains in the wrong place. Yep, right. yeah. exactly. And All now right. we have another. Tom, another question. Tom from Markley's on with us. Uh, I play a lot of strip poker with my guy friends. Does that make me gay? Like I Markley. said, Dan, we're going to have these questions. That's Dr. right. And Dan. so he's exclusively playing the strip poker with guy friends. On a scale from one to gay, Dan, what would you put it? He's gay. 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 One to gay. 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 One to gay, gay. <laughs> All right. Have we ever go. answered a question not gay? No, no. Am I gay question not gay? No, because usually if, it, if you're asking yourself the question, you probably already answered it. You are gay, probably. So. You're pretty gay. <laughs> <laughs> you're gay. Right from the doctor's gay. mouth, okay? Yeah, yeah you are. Well, that's just... <laughs> that's really exciting uh, news for we him. Just, he we came out of closet here on turn someone's down. life. There we go. We just changed his life. He didn't know if he was gay or <laughs> do you not. Do you think for the better? I hope so. I hope for I the mean, better. I mean, confusion is not paradise. That's right. Exactly. But then again, ignorance can be bliss. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's man. something that we're stuck with. Unfortunately. Okay, so I think we're working with we're working another someone else. sexual but scare. <laughs> yes, the next sexual scare on our list. Oh, yeah. mm. The pounding pillow? No? Okay, pounding pillow. Yeah. The pounding pillow, you forget to take your tampon out and you have sex with your tampon in and it gets stuck in your vagina, you don't know what to do. Doesn't this happen to everybody? You know, what the heck, do you, yeah. how do you get it out? Should you be worried? Do you go fishing? Does it hurt? Ask some questions, I wanna know. Yes, this is a very big scare and I have actually a lot of college girls coming to see me because when they were in high school they only used pads and then they uh, came to college and now they're using tampons and they forget to take them out and then they have sex and then when I see them the tampon is all the way up in Canada and we're in Michigan so uh, the most important thing to do is try to take it out uh, if it has a very very bad smell to it I would definitely see a doctor uh, but you can clean the area out uh, if it's been there for quite some time and you can't get it out, again, you have to see a doctor because you're afraid of the um, toxic stress. Toxic, toxic stress. stress yeah. Ooh. Yeah, toxic stress. Um, real quick question. Are some people immune to toxic stress syndrome? I read that. It's not that they're immune. It's that they just, they just don't, don't get it. They don't uh, yeah. get it. Uh, it's, a, it's a rare thing. Uh, basically, what happens is that uh, you have... There's a certain bacteria that's on the, the tampon, just like this bacteria on this desk and this bacteria on my skin on this Mountain Dew bottle. And when you put it inside the vagina for such a long period of time, the vagina is very, very absorptive. And it, it, the bacteria starts to overgrow. It brings in that, that toxin into the blood, and then you end up in the ICU. Okay. It's very, very bad. So. Oh, boy. Well, we have another question that we're going to show um, from Fletcher Hall. Brandon nice. asks. Represent. My experience in bed is short every time. What can I do to last longer? There you go. Brandon, that is a very, very good question. Um, there are some sexual products out there right now, or, or foreplay products, um, that are supposed to enhance the experience and make it go longer. Uh, typically, these are lidocaine derivatives, lidocaine or benzocaine. Uh, these are some creams. What you could do is you could put it on the underside of your penis before you start to have sex. Uh, let it sit there for a little bit so it doesn't rub off too much on the, in the vagina. Uh, the other thing you can do is uh, pinch the tip. You basically are about to have an orgasm. Uh, you think you're maybe 10 seconds away is to withdraw and to squeeze uh, the penis tip is as hard as you can. You'll feel the blood flow out, and that should be good for another uh, five minutes or so. That's a really good trick. Yeah, it's very good. And you know, what? it's it's what we use on on peop on on men who can't have intercourse. They have premature ejaculations to remove the penis out, squeeze the the penis, or you can squeeze <laughs> not the testicles but the the scrotum as hard as you can. And this like this pain uh, removes the entire right, kind orgasmic like making climb. Well. Okay. Biting a lip, yeah. thinking about your grandma. These are other things that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thinking <laughs> yeah. about baseball. The, yeah, uh, but if you induce some sort of pain, your ear, the scrotum, the tip of your, the tip of your penis is, you know, that that's the one that's recommended. Sure. It sounds like it would Fabulous. definitely work, doesn't it? Well, it does. Yes. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Uh, well, we have another one. John with from Cousins, is on with us. Uh, Deer turned on. What is a sexy way to shave your pubic hair? Woo! So we have landing strips. We have all types of you know. Welcome to the jungle situations. Uh, That's disgusting. Sexy okay. You know, sexy for some people. Sexy way. Um, initials. Right. Arrows. Maybe your area code. 
That's that's, that's interesting. Hot, I just I thought guess. of that right now. I, that's yeah, well, cute. I actually, you know, my office is in New York, right above the Bronx, where people don't actually have pubic hair. <laughs> uh, they're about as bare as you know my forehead in every patient that I come in. So, uh, some people think that's sexy. I, I think looking like a three-year-old girl is a little <laughs> a little off. It's nice to have some sort of thing. Uh, my preference is what's called the landing strip, and I think that the, the Pamela Anderson yes, landing I, strip. the landing strip. It, it's there's a lot to see, but there's still a little bit of old school still there. So <laughs> that's nice. All right, <laughs> last for the pass. That's, that's my that's my that's my personal favorite. All right, well, very good. All right, learning a lot about my brother on air. That's not for the man though. <laughs> oh no, man, oh. the man is just just <laughs> keep it right. trim, you know. Why not? Okay, so Eric from Bursley. No, okay. Well, you all can see what it says right there. Is asked him out safe. Uh, Eric from Bursley. Rimming. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> does it sound safe? Is well, I question. don't think that's what he's saying. That's not what he's saying. He's not talking about rim jobbing. He's talking about anal inter intercourse and then having I see oral it. sex I see after okay. the intercourse. Or tossing salad. That's why you guys brought me on here. So yeah, that's that what thing. I said. So tossing salad, he's not talking about Tossing Same thing. Same thing. Ask to mouth is specifically having anal intercourse and then having oral intercourse after that. Well, we learned something. Um, it's safe. Um, I'll tell you what, having, having anal intercourse to vaginal intercourse is absolutely, it's not what he asked, but, you know, anal to vaginal is out of the question, it cannot happen, uh, you'll, you'll hurt your, your partner. Uh, anal to oral, um, I would take a washcloth and wash it. There is E. coli, could get on the lip, could get infection, but generally it's not really going to hurt you. And, and you know what, just plain to nasty be, be, is that not in anyone else's... Uh, yeah, but the thing is, uh, you know, you call it nasty, but to some person that might not be nasty. Right. You know, and... Yeah, you're you not know, everyone, Jeff. Yeah, that's true. Everyone. You know what, I'm, I don't speak and for the there, there's right. another thing, too. I mean, what, I mean, if, you, if you're clean, if you, if you plan this out and you go take a shower and you soap and both parties know that the area is clean and ready for intercourse, then... It's really just another organ. It's not terrible. You know what I mean? Okay. Let's move on because I stand corrected. Uh, it's not nasty, it? apparently. Alex yeah. from Bursley. Uh, dear turn on, a guy runs around naked. <laughs> <laughs> Is that gay? I you know have what? to say, absolutely not. This because is that would the make first time we've said no. I would have to say that to that because when I come in after a hard day's work. Uh, my clothes are pretty much off before I can even get onto the couch. Well, and, uh, that's great. It, it, I am not gay <laughs> <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. So that would be saying that I am gay and I am not. So. I mean, like, I think of like locker rooms and yeah, exactly. people walking around. I mean, yeah. locker rooms. I don't know, guys. I'm not sure. Hmm. sure now, if you like watching right. men run around gay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm running around <laughs> naked, then you're pretty gay. Yeah. Well, that's clear. Some, that clear. Someone's thinking that somewhere, and you just answered that question. Yeah. We guarantee it. Okay, Britt from Cousins. What do you have? Is just the tip safe? Britt from Cousins. You know, she's playing just the tip just to see how it feels. Yeah. Britt, um, it's a very good question, and, you know, I, I uh, do not want to really sabotage my, my fellow males, but it's not. Um, there are a lot of things that go on with, with just the tip. There's pre-ejaculate, there are HPV, there's genital warts, and just the tip with a condom is very, very safe, but unfortunately just the tip is not safe. Um, there, Sorry to there, burst your Yeah, I oh know. <laughs> I know. I'm such a downer, but uh, I can't lie. I took an oath. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's true, though. Uh, even just a little bit of ejaculate, uh, or what people call pre-cum, if it's put on the, the labia, on the inside at all, uh, there have been case studies of pregnancy. Okay. Well, there you go. Got that, Sandy? I, you know, I got yeah. that. I'm writing that down in my <laughs> head for next time. <coughs> all right, well, I think we, we should at least hit at least the top. <coughs> yeah, we need to get through this top ten. Okay, some so people are writing this down. Um, these are some good questions that are coming in. I'm, I'm very See, impressed you were, with your student them. body. And these are freshmen and sophomores mostly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are very intelligent students. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> Take this away, Justin. Uh, Jubiet. Jubiet. Sounds like Jubiet. A male uh, from West Quad. <laughs> Jubiet. Oh, that's probably it. Dear Jadon, uh, I have a lot of pubic hair. 
but can't shave due to religious reasons. Is there anything else I can do? There's absolutely something you can do. Um, Braiding? It involves rubber bands. <laughs> and what you could do is, uh, the way that pubic hair comes across, Right? Braiding, braiding, Rastafarian, right. Oh, man. Uh, you could basically grab the pubic hair, like, on both sides, bring it out, twist it, and put rubber bands on. And this is Like pigtails? Yeah. Okay. And then you could dye it red and go be like Pippi Longstock. You, you, you have your own reverse uh, landing strip, though. But, it, you know, the, if you have a big, bushy area of pubic hair, and you're just uncomfortable, but... Uh, I'm getting uncomfortable. <laughs> I hope Juvier is having sex, though. If he's that religious that he can't shave his pubic hair, then who's really looking? Yeah. That's right. Interesting. Yeah. Well, very good. I'm <laughs> excited that he now has a Pippi long stocking situation. So that's what you got to do. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, let's go to our next uh, Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> so our next one is uh, bleeding after sex is a, ve is a very scary I thing. I think we skipped one. No, I know. Okay. We skipped it on purpose. Okay. Cause okay. That was just answered, that question. Okay. Um, but bleeding after sex, bad blood, we can call it. So oh this is a scary thing, having bleeding after sex? Right, and, and what are you most likely seeing there? When you're Besides, not on your period. Right. When, when you're not on your period. The result of what then? Um, well, I'll tell you what, if you have a sexual experience and uh, you're having a lot of bleeding afterwards, uh, you've been cut. Um, whether you're using a toy, whether you have a large endowed partner, or uh, you just weren't uh, lubricated enough during your experience, uh, if you're having a lot of bleeding, you've got to go to the emergency room because uh, that has to be packed or sewn. And it, it seems like it's ridiculous, but in my, in my residency training, I saw about 10 cases that I had to bring to the operating room, and not all of them were with toys, and not all of them were very, very large men, and these women had uh, terrible tears. So if you're having sex, and then all of a sudden there's a lot of bleeding, and it's not your period, and it's coming, it's not going to stop. You've got to go to the emergency room. What about if it's your first time? This whole popping the cherry it, idea. The, the first time, there's something called uh, the, the hymen. Mm -hmm. And the hymen is basically uh, a covering uh, between the outside and the inside of the vagina. And sometimes it does lead to bleeding, but this typically is not um, gushing blood. This typically is spotting a little bit of blood, just like a, like a period. But what I'm talking about, that's, that's really not something to be concerned about. It usually stops in a couple hours. But real heavy bleeding after sex that's, that's coming out like uh, running water is an emergency. Mm -hmm. And it does happen on college campuses, particularly with toys. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, very, that's very. Uh, we're learning a lot. Yes, we are. Well, this is what we should have done this a long time ago. I know. So thank you very much for You ever looking for a second job? What, toys? No, you, Dr. <laughs> <Dan>, you. <laughs> you. If you ever need a second job, please. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, Thank we you. have another question. Kenton from West Quad asks, I got my condom stuck inside my girlfriend. How can I get it out? P.S. It wasn't her vagina. So we can use our imagination <laughs> with this one. Uh, maybe it happened right as the show is going on, and he needs to know right now how to get this condom out. Maybe, yes. Right now. Because people do how screw to our show. They, people Studies get, have shown. People get off to our show. It is called Turned On. Yeah. You know? So, um, so if it's Dr. Not, Dan. If it's not in your mouth, and it's not in your vagina, you can get it out with two methods, one of which I call the fish hook. <laughs> or, this is or very thoughtful. Just copyrighted, please don't use it. Doctor this medical way. <laughs> or is it the fish hook, uh, which we've had to do. Um, or laxatives. Laxatives, the condom is very, very soft, um, and uh, it will, she can pull it out. Will it clog your toilet? No. Okay. You, you gotta think ahead in these kinds of I mean, of think, about, think about when you go to the bathroom, that's a lot firmer and more difficult than a little plastic condom. But if you go to the bathroom and it's not there, then, then you're in trouble. Ooh. Then Lord knows wow. where it is by now. Yeah. yeah. Right? Who knows? China. All right, let's come on. Hopefully your uh, girlfriend's okay. Yeah, well, we got Sean from Cousins. Did or not, what is the average male penis size? What is too big and what is too small? Great question. So the, the international average of penis size, ranging from all continents of all men across the world, when erect, is actually five and a half inches. Um, you know, people talk about six inches, seven inches, eight inches. The international average is five and a half inches uh, with a girth of, uh, 
I, I think, uh, about the same size in, in circumference. That's the average size. But in circumference, I mean, if, oh, you, if, you, if you open it out, you know, just say, inches. not wide. <laughs> yes, Think exactly. about it. Right. Okay. <laughs> right, so right, right, right. And what's too big and what's too small? Um, Personal preference. It depends who you're with, yeah. you know. I mean, if you're with a very petite person and, you know, you're, you feel like you're, you're under, uh, then you might be big for her. All right. Good. Well, let's see what Jill is asking from Bursley. Uh, Jill, dear, turned on. Is it safe to share my dildo with a lesbian partner? Is it safe to s share a dildo? Um, with your lesbian partner? Uh, well, I'd definitely say it's unhygienic. Uh, but uh, if you're in involved in intercourse, if that lesbian partner uh, has any STDs, then you'll get STDs as well. Um, if the lesbian partner is also having sex with men, if she's not you know, lesbian partner, then it, then it wouldn't be safe. But to be honest, there's really not much you can do. The only thing you can really spread is herpes and HPV. So if they're both clean and they've been tested? Well, you can't really test for HPV, and you can only really see herpes. You can't test and... Can one I mean, it, it, HPV to it, the bottom line is, no, you're not completely safe, but I mean, I what is completely safe? You know, so right. I mean, you if you're sharing, yeah. if you're sharing a, a toy dildo with a with a lesbian partner, it's like having sex with a male partner. You know, I mean, you're you're moving your <coughs> insides of one lesbian partner to the insides of the other. So if she's clean, then that'll be clean. If she's dirty, then the other one will you know be infected. Oh great! So I'm glad I know that. Okay, Steve from Alice Lloyd asks, what is better for oral sex, circumcised or uncircumcised? Um, hmm. Never thought about that first. I haven't. This is a this is actually a topic of great debate. Uh, there's there's an argument right now that uncircumcised males have a greater sensation on the base of their penis, which leads to uh, orgasm, and it's believed that circumcision might interrupt some of those nerve fibers and lead to less enhanced sexual experience. On the other hand, a circumcised penis, sometimes, uh, if it's not properly taken care of, uh, there can be a large amount of discharge, or, or what people call shmegma, on this penis. And a lot of females uh, have a very disparate reaction to that. Wow. So, Tons of awesome questions. So, yeah. Those are very good and questions. very good answers, and this is phenomenal. We're kind of playing stump the doctor here. And yeah. You're, <laughs> you're on fire, so we're not going to put you out. Uh, Zane from Bursley. <laughs> uh, let's see if you have a question that Dan might even think about. Dan turned on. I want to be a gynecologist, <coughs> but I'm scared that I will get turned on by a patient. What say you, Dr. Dan? Zane. What say you, Dr. Dan? <laughs> what <laughs> say you? Um, Please you're, answer. You're, you're afraid to be turned on by a patient? <laughs> um, well, I guess it could happen, but the truth is, is that you do uh, so much volume in this field, uh, after a while, uh, between the patient-doctor relationship, it becomes what old hat. So... Do you kind of become desensitized to the... Well, I wouldn't say I become desensitized to my own sexual experiences, but I become sensitized to attractive patients coming in. They just get patients and they have problems and they're once just you start... vaginas. I, I would honestly say, yeah. like, if, <laughs> if Sammy or someone else came into my office, I would say, that's an attractive female, but I, I, I don't, um... Yeah. I don't really feel well, you know, for it. There's a lot of reward, too. As you can see, Zane become kind of a textbook yeah. of sexual knowledge, and everybody appreciates one of those. So, very, very good. All right, okay. so let's see. But I, I like want to ask on. a really important question. Yeah, let's go. I've been waiting for this the whole episode. So, Dr. Dan, what is the deal with the G spot? Mm. Well, I just read an mm. article. What is the deal with the G spot? What is the deal with there the G spot? <laughs> the G spot. The G spot? Yeah. The G spot. Um, I read an article saying some women actually are born without G-spots. Some people don't know what G-spots are. What's the deal? So, uh, the whole concept of the G-spot is very, very controversial right now. Um, it has never actually been proven scientifically through biopsy and that sort of thing uh, that there is an area of increased nerves called the G-spot. Uh, should we go to the John Madden playbook? Yes. yes. Go John Madden? Let's go. Okay. Let's do this. All right. Dr. Dan. I'm excited. I'm excited. We didn't rehearse. We've been uh, waiting. I know. We've been waiting. So, yes, this, this is what we'll do here. 
Um, if this is the female laying down, and this is the belly button right here, and this is the vagina right here, the cervix coming down, it's speculated that this area of enhanced um, enjoyment ranges from either right here or right here. It's believed that there's an area right around here that has an increased uh, density of nerve fibers and that sort of thing. Now, biases have been taken of these areas. It has been proven, but anecdotally speaking, meaning from people's experience, that a deep penetration to this spot, whether a penis is entering in the vagina or the penis is entering the rectum and then coming through to the vagina to here, not penet you know, just through having sex, that this leads to a very, very gratifying sexual experience. Uh, people sometimes liken it to uh, stroking the, the bottom of the base of the penis while a man is having an orgasm. So, you know, this is what's considered to be the Grafenberg or the G-spot right here. And uh, although it has been proven anecdotally and from my own experience and that sort of thing, it, it oh. does work. Awesome. Um, do you need the G-spot mm -hmm. to have um, an orgasm through vaginal stimulation, like vaginal incorporation? Um, some females say that they only need to be have deep penetration, uh, but the truth is that most orgasm does originate from clitoral stimulation. So, I mean, there are some women who will orgasm from the G-spot, but they're probably unknowing rubbing the clitoris somewhere on the man's pelvic bone or, or something like that or along the shaft while they're having sex. Um, clitoral stimulation alone sometimes causes orgasm, but really it's the combination uh, of the two. Uh, females can cause their own stimulation through cl clitoral excitement, but usually cannot cause it through touching their G-spot, like putting their fingers right. inside. So the clitoris has to be involved in some way that's for... That's why I love it. Yeah, that's why. Awesome. That's yeah. why you know where it is and we can't find it, right? Right? Yeah. Always. <laughs> Always. And we have another call right now for us. Good Thank you very much. Hans. Hans. Where is Franz? Hans. Is my question. Hans. Dear Hans. turned on. Does scrotum sweat give pink eye? <laughs> Does scrotum sweat give pink you eye? Know, I wouldn't know what to say to this, so if you, let's say well, you, Dr. Dad. I, I would have to say that um, if you rub your sweaty scrotum and then rub your eyes and then you have irritated eyes, uh, you know where it came from, so that's all. I mean, if I put my finger in a pile of dog poo and rub my eyes, they turn red. If I put my finger in scrotum sweat and rub my eye, they turn red too hot, so. <laughs> scrotum sweat, dog poo, well, got it. You know, we're running out of we're time. We're running out of time. And so I would like to ask you, if, you know, as our sexual genie, if we had three wishes, can you give us three sexual recommendations quickly? One, two, three. For us college kids on campus, yes. three sexual recommendations. So for, for safe, good sex, these would be my top three recommendations. Uh, the first is, uh, although it might take away a little bit from spontaneity, it's very important uh, for females to have, uh, to go pee after they have sex. Uh, it might take away, away from your partner and laying there, go pee, come lay back because you're not going to have any sex if you get a urinary tract infection for the next week or two. Um, the second thing uh, I would definitely recommend is to survey the area before you actually uh, have sex. So, you know, I do encourage oral sex and I do encourage uh, having uh, manual uh, interaction with each other. You're looking for bumps, you're looking nice. for anything like that. Um, kind of be aware of each other's anatomy before uh, you start having sex. You don't want to get herpes or warts. And uh, the third piece of advice, always, always, always use a condom on a one-night stand. There it is. Because if, if you're with that girl for a one-night stand or she's with that guy, just so she's been there before with other guys having one-night stands, and that's the one you want to be careful of. Straight ah. from the doctor's mouth. We there have it. There it is. Well, you know, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming, Dr. Green. Yeah. Thank you so much and for my coming. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Right, Thank you so much, Dr. Dad. Okay. And he's giving, he's going to deliver a baby tomorrow at 4 o'clock. All Just right. so everyone knows and you know, we how great you are. We won't be here next week. Uh, we're taking the week off because we gave you this hour special and we're going to be back again. In at April? The end. Yes. In April. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Dan. Thank see you for you all your time. questions. All right, and, yeah, and it. It's turned on. Or we're always turned on. With your streets experts, Jake Serwer and Sarah Kuzminski. Oh, nice. Here's your director, Andrew Jones.
and your floor director, Caitlin Erta.